okay so we will start now okay this is your thermodynamics 2 lecture number 2 and uh, rest of the student i think will join uh, with it uh, with time okay so today for our lecture okay so can anybody confirm that uh, what you are seeing in my desktop it's written chapter number 10 sir we are seeing the slide uh, yes chapter sir 10. chapter 10 vapor power cycle okay okay good okay so now this is your uh, uh chapter number 10 which is your lecture number 2 uh so this is uh, totally on your thermodynamics 2 side okay so previously we already go through some thermodynamic one concept uh, which is just to in order to refresh your uh, some of your basic concept of thermodynamics uh, one before starting with thermodynamics 2 however this uh, class start from chapter number 10 Uh, but our basic thermodynamics two course start from chapter number nine. But first, I will cover chapter ten. Then we will come back to chapter number nine and then follow our course outline as it was uh, mentioned before. Okay, so this is uh, chapter number ten of book, your book Singel uh, Thermodynamic Approach Vapor Power Cycles. Okay, so now we will move towards that um, what we are going to cover in this uh, class. Okay, so the main thing is that in this uh, lecture uh, it will highlight on heat engines and Rankine cycle. Okay, so these are some basic type of uh, cycles, uh, operating cycle, thermodynamic cycle, which are usually used to produce some type of powers, or uh, you can commonly see in your steam power plants, uh, in your nuclear power plants, in your coal thermal power uh, power plants. So these all are operating on the heat engine uh, okay and that will be on the working on the rankine cycle okay so one thing that do not confuse that engine term that it will be using in your internal combustion engine in your automobile okay so that heat engine is a very vast term that will be used for your power generation process okay so that's why we mostly use in your steam power plants or some sort of that type of um devices also then there will be also a term gas power plant uh, gas power system or gas power cycle under this there will be a breton cycle then there will be a term internal combustion engine in which there will be auto diesel stirling engine okay then there will be a term refrigeration air conditioning okay so these all are covered in this course but right now you all um, you have a uh, just overview that what is different between heat engine and gas power cycle so the basic difference between these two are because uh, we are going to start with the heat engine okay so the main difference is that whenever we are talking about heat engine and rankine cycle uh, the working fluid in your uh, heat engine is always either it will be a liquid state or either it will be in a vapor state or it will be in liquid plus vapor so these are your working fluid phases while you are uh, working on the rankine cycle however in gas power system gas power system or gas power cycles uh, your working fluid is always in your gas phase okay so this is the common difference between this uh, two type of uh, cycle later on we will discuss uh, in other lecture that uh, what is the difference between internal combustion engine from refrigeration and heat pump in detail okay so right now just you have to focus that uh, we are going to study heat engine so the working fluid is always in liquid vapor or liquid plus vapor okay so this is the basic of your cycle okay so now going towards your uh, power producing cycle so first basic type of cycle which is more uh, most efficient one is you already know that this is a carnot cycle okay so but um, here uh, the main thing uh, you have to know about it that why we are not using carnot cycle in our steam power plants uh, instead we are using rankine cycle because you cannot see any opera turbine or anything which is working on a carnot cycle so one basic thing is that this is uh, this is uh, however it is one of the most efficient one Uh, efficient cycle but this is a idealized cycle okay so this is not a real cycle a carnot cycle but the components in the carnot cycle is also same if you see there will be a one boiler there will be a turbine also where you can produce some work there will be a condens condenser also where the heat is rejected and there will be a feed pump also where you have to supply some work <laughs> but uh, the same components are also available on the rankine cycle but uh, the difference between the carnot cycle and rankine cycle is based on some limitation okay so that why we are not using carnot cycle in our uh, steam power plant so due to some limitation that limitation we will see that what are these limitations are so if you see that uh, this is your ts uh, ts diagram for your carnot cycle 
and all the states are mentioned from one to two, two to three, the your turbine, so three to four heat rejection, four to one there will be a pump, and one to two there will be a heat addition. Uh, okay, so but here the problem is that uh, the main limitation over there that um, there is a isothermal heating and cooling requires two phase system. Okay. Uh, and limiting the heat transfer process to two phase system. And one more important thing is that uh, the temperature, the highest temperature, which is at T2, this is your highest temperature in the Cournot cycle, okay, which is less than your critical temperature. So this is your critical temperature. You already know that the temperature which is lie over there on the dome is the T critical. So your TH in your Cournot cycle is less than T critical. OK, if this TH is less than T critical, it's mean you are limiting your um, uh, U-turns limits the on the, your thermal efficiency, mean your thermal efficiency will be less. OK, if you are limiting that um, TH is less than T, T critical. OK, so second limitation we will see in the corner cycle is that quality of the uh, steam degrades, uh, degrades during isentropic expansion. OK, so where is the isentropic expansion? Your process two to three. OK, so two to three in the turbine, there will be isentropic expansion. OK, and due to decrease in temperature and the high moisture content in the steam turbine is a major cause of the erosive wear. OK, so if we have more erosive wear, it means your turbine uh, have uh, less span of time, uh, less operation time. OK, mean that uh, it will uh, maybe fail uh, within uh, less span of time. So that's why we have to avoid some erosive wear also. So in Cournot cycle, these erosive wears will be maximum. So that's why we are not going to operate on the Cournot cycle. And third, the, the main uh, reason that why we are not using Cournot cycle is if you can notice your process number. OK, so if you can see that uh, your process number four to one, which is your pump one. OK, and this point four lies OK. And one thing uh, which I want to clear is that uh, you already know from thermodynamics uh, one as well that this is your compressed liquid state here. This is your superheated uh, vapor state along this dome. This is your saturated liquid line. Here it is saturated vapor line and this is your. Two phase region OK, so this also you have to clear about that uh, what uh, is the meaning of this TS diagram. OK, so another important limitation over there, it is not practical to design a compressor or a pump which can compress two phase mixture. What does this mean? That because if you see that this point four is in the two phase region. OK, so it is impossible to uh, develop a compressor or a pump which can compress two phase liquid. So that's why it is uh, not practical to design uh, uh, Cournot cycle in your daily steam power plants or uh, some sort of working work producing devices. So these are the limitations. So now we are going towards our real vapor power uh, system, which is your Rankine cycle. OK, so as you notice that in your vapor power system model, you can see the main components, your boiler, where you are producing some heat, your turbine, which is uh, going to uh, convert some um, uh, your uh, heat into your uh, work. Then there will be a condenser, which is your heat rejection uh, process, and then there will be a feed pump, okay, where you are going to supply some heat, okay. But uh, there will be some other equipments that are also associated with it, like there will be a cooling tower, there will be a stack, there will be other pumps. But in our basic Rankine cycle, we only focus on these four components. OK, in order to just examine our Rankine cycle for our vapor power system model. OK, so these are some of our thermodynamic uh, system, uh, which consists of four parts, boiler, turbine, condenser and pump, similar to Cournot cycle. Cournot cycle also has uh, four, uh, four parts. OK, so now going towards the next part, uh, which is uh, uh, before we have to analyze our Rankine cycle, you already know about it. OK, so this is your compressed liquid region on your TS diagram. This line is your saturated liquid. So if any point lies on this area, it will be saturated liquid. If it was there, it will be compressed liquid. And this is your critical point, OK, where there will be a phase change. 
then there will be a saturated uh, vapor line if your any point lies in your thermodynamic system on this line it will be saturated vapor and if it lies on this area or this area it will be saturated vapor region uh, superheated vapor region sorry okay then there will be a saturated liquid and vapor region which is your two phase region okay so this is how we can read our ts diagram so all uh, i hope you already know that what is a saturated liquid so liquid that is about to vaporize is your saturated liquid uh, and the compressed one which is forced to be a liquid okay then there will be a saturated liquid plus vapor the state at which the liquid and vapor phases coexist in the equilibrium then there will be a superheated vapor a vapor that is not about to condense that is not a saturated vapor okay so this is how we can describe our different phases in our rankine cycle okay so now coming towards the rankine cycle ideal okay so there will be a two type of rankine cycle we commonly see first one is the ideal one so here in this lecture we only focus on ideal but there will be also actual also and we can see in later lecture that what is the difference between ideal and actual rankine cycle but right now you just have to focus on ideal one so ideal one has a pump where you are going to supply some heat okay uh, which is uh, installed at your state 1 and state 2 between state 1 and state 2 then there will be a boiler which is installed between 2 to 3 where you are going to supply some heat uh, okay so here we are going to supply some work not a heat okay so here we are going to supply some heat boiler in either in the form of your solar energy in the form of burning coal or some fuel or some sort of other form of energy then there will be a 3 to 4 where we have to install some turbine in order which can produce some work okay uh, as a result of uh, our heat addition then there will be a 4 to 1 where we have to install our condenser which can be as a q out okay where we have to reject some heat so this is the basic uh, terminology for your rankine cycle so now coming towards its uh, ts diagram okay as you analyze that uh, you have to uh, uh, see that uh, there will be a term boiler turbine pump condenser okay so now we have to analyze on your ts diagram so what uh, is happening in our uh, rankine cycle thermodynamically as you see this there will be a point 1 to 2 which is the turbine so this is your point 1 this is your point 2 and here there will be a isentropic expansion of the fluid okay from saturated vapor to condenser pressure so what does this mean that uh, from 1 to 2 entropy is uh, your uh, constant okay for uh, state 1 and state 2 what does this mean that it's mean that when there will be isentropic expansion process your work produced by your turbine will be maximum okay and uh, then there will be a term from 2 to 3 2 to 3 there will be a condenser it's mean there will be a heat rejection over there okay so 2 to 3 is your constant pressure uh, heat rejection okay so and then there will be a 3 to 4 okay so 3 to 4 again there will be isentropic process like 1 to 2 but here the difference is that 1 to 2 is the expansion process 3 to 4 is your compression process and in the compression process the work supplied to the pump is minimum okay so what does this mean that it's mean that we are giving minimum uh, work to our pump however we are producing maximum work from our turbine okay so this is the reason be, uh, behind this isentropic expansion and isentropic compression process okay so then there will be 4 to 1 so what is uh, in our 4 to 1 okay so 4 to 1 we have a heat addition one okay so this is your four this is your one and four to one we have installed one boiler okay so boiler there will be a heat addition okay and that heat addition will be at constant pressure also so, okay so what does this mean by constant pressure if constant pressure mean that whatever the p1 p1 is equal to p4 so this p1 is equal to p4 and constant pressure heat rejection is p2 is equal to p3 okay so if you have any uh, pressure given in your question like p1 is given so it's mean that p4 is also given if p2 is given it's mean p3 is also known okay so that um, this is how we can uh, solve our thermodynamic system for the rankine cycle okay so in each question which you seen later on you have to find some efficiency of your rankine cycle or efficiency of your thermodynamic system so this is how you can find out that it is a ratio of cyclic uh, uh, work which is uh, work produced by your cycle and divided by uh, your q supplied okay so the q, uh, w cycle is equal to work done by turbine minus work done by pump okay so these are some 
work by uh, turbine and this is your work done by pump okay so, and then there will be a q supplied so if you already know these value you can easily find out the efficiency there will be no issue okay so now moving towards okay so i already explained uh, this to you because this you already have a uh, overview that one to two is an isentropic compression which is your pump one to two two to three constant pressure heat addition which is your boiler three to four your isentropic extension turbine four to one constant pressure heat rejection which is a condenser one okay so this is one okay so these are some important things you already have to go through okay so while analyzing our thermodynamic system for our okay till now there will be any question you can ask me okay so now we are moving towards our analyzing of your rank and cycle so in thermodynamics any cycle uh, in which we have to analyze it start from energy balance equation so you already know energy balance equation that your energy in energy out is equal to change in enthalpy delta h okay so this come from your thermodynamic one uh, portion okay so if you do not know about it you can go and revise it okay so this is your energy balance equation so whenever we have to develop some equation from energy balance for example i want to develop an energy equation uh, from our for our pump okay so as you see for our pump the pump is installed between state 1 and state 2 okay so what we have to do is we have to apply energy balance equation uh, between these two states okay so as you know that uh, for the pump one there will be a no heat addition so mean the q terms is zero okay so we are going to supply some work so it's mean that w out is equal to zero so then h w in is equal to h e minus h1 so what is h e h e is basically your enthalpy at exit and h i is enthalpy at your inlet so where is your exit okay so exit is at point 2 and inlet is point 1 so it's mean that your enthalpy become uh, your work done by the pump is h2 minus h1 so which is written over there as well okay so this is how we can create our equation from using energy balance equation so similar terms w pump so this also come from your thermodynamic one course which is defined as your specific volume into p2 minus p1 so if you are uh, p2 is known to you p1 is known to you and specific volume okay so this specific volume we are using at state number one so this is a convention okay so we have to use specific volume at one for this equation okay so if these value are known to you we can also find uh, work done by our uh, work which is supplied to our pump also okay so now again uh, because we have to apply energy balance equation on all our processes for boiler also turbine also condenser as well okay so now moving towards the uh, next one okay so one thing i want to uh, make clear that uh, any student who is not attending this lecture uh, uh, you can just uh, give him some sort of reminder that at the end i will give uh, assign one question to you and any student uh, who will attend this lecture uh, will only be able to attend that question and you have to answer to me uh, in my inbox in 10 minutes okay so that's why you have to listen it to this all lecture carefully okay and uh, also you have to place your thermodynamics table with you okay so that it will be not difficulty when we are correlating our thermodynamics table uh, during this uh, rank and cycle analysis okay so now coming towards our second part okay so second part is our boiler okay so as you see in boiler uh, again we are going to apply from um, our energy balance equation so in boiler there will be no w there will be no work done okay there will be a no q out so q in is equal to h e minus h1 so h exit is 3 and h i is your h uh, h2 so which is your inlet so this is how we can develop our uh, q in equation uh, for our boiler okay so now again coming towards the turbine okay as you see the turbine okay so now energy balance for the turbine so turbine is at state number three and four as you see the in the turbine there will be a new heat uh, supply or heat output okay then there will be we have to produce some output from our so w in is equal to zero so it comes to be w is equal to h e minus h i so what is our uh, exit point minus w is equal to h4 minus h3 okay so you just want to rearrange it and once you rearrange it because it's the negative work over there 
so it comes to be h3 minus h4 so now you have already have developed over but turbine out equation as well in term of enthalpies okay so now coming towards our condenser so condenser is at state number four and state one uh, between state four and one so again applying heat balance equation uh, energy balance equation you can find out uh, your uh, equation for our condenser as well q out is equal to h4 minus h1 so this is how we can develop our different equations for our uh, to analyze our Rankine cycle okay so now coming towards our um, efficiency because in each of your question which you all have to seen in this course either you have to find your thermal efficiency okay or either you have to find uh, some w net or q in okay so this is how we can develop it so just you have to see that uh, one minus q out q out what does q out mean okay so we already develop an equation that it is h3 minus h4 divided by h4 minus h1 okay so this is how we already developed from energy analysis previously okay so this is not a new one so if you rearrange it you can easily get this relation efficiency is equal to h2 minus h1 minus h3 minus h4 over h2 minus h1 so if i want to say that you have to find out efficiency of the rank and cycle uh, all you have to know about is that enthalpy at state number two enthalpy at state number one enthalpy at state number three enthalpy at state number four so if these enthalpies are provided to you you can easily find the efficiency <laughs> so in this uh, course most of the thing you have to find um, find out your enthalpies values by using your pressure and temperature values okay so that's why we have to use thermodynamics table as well okay so so another question that uh, which is important over there is that how to find these enthalpies okay so in each of your question either the p1 or t1 is given or p2 is given okay so if these three things are given to you in your question you can easily find enthalpy at one enthalpy at two enthalpy at state three enthalpy at state four there will be no dif uh, difficulty okay so how we can find out enthalpies at different states so first thing uh, is to find out enthalpy at state one so if you see that enthalpy at state one it will be on a uh, superheated vapor region okay so for superheated vapor region you need two values p1 and t1 and then you have to go to thermodynamics table and you can find out your h1 and s1 also so we will see how to find it after this we have to go and solve the example also okay so again h2 how to find h2 if you see h2 lies in your two phase region okay liquid plus vapor region okay so for liquid plus vapor one of the important thing is you know that uh, to find the uh, enthalpy value or entropy value at uh, liquid plus vapor region so you have to follow this equation s2 is equal to s2f plus x s2 fg so what is this uh, s2f it is your saturated uh, it's come from your saturated liquid one the uh, liquid uh, conditions x is your quality okay so this you have to find out okay if it is not available in your question uh, then you have to find out otherwise you can directly use this equation to find the enthalpy okay so then sfg sfg is your sg minus uh, your entropy value at uh, your gaseous state and then entropy value at your saturated liquid state so this is again you can just uh, read from your thermodynamics table as well okay so now coming towards the next thing which is your enthalpy value at h3 okay so how to find enthalpy value at h3 as you know that uh, this 2 and 3 is your constant pressure process okay mean that p2 is equal to p3 okay so it's mean p2 is known to you previously from h2 okay so you can easily find p3 as well okay because these two are same so then again going towards your thermodynamics table you can easily find h2f and s2f and you can find out uh, s3 h3 also and s3 also by this okay so same for the h4 if h4 you can see it is also your isentropic process okay and you can find out uh, that thing as well okay so now it is uh, okay it is also a constant pressure process so mean p1 is equal to p2 uh, p4 okay so your pressure one is known to you from question so you can find out p4 as well okay so then you can find out the thermodynamics property on this state as well okay so now coming towards the question which is our main thing so first you have to read it properly 
that what does this question says? OK, so this is your example number 10-1 from your thermodynamics book. So what does it say that consider a steam power plant? OK, so first thing is steam power plant. It's mean that your working fluid is either liquid, either vapor or either liquid plus vapor operating on a ideal Rankine cycle. OK, whenever it was defined that it was an ideal Rankine cycle, you have to develop that type of TS diagram. OK, but if it was written, it was actual, then you have to define another one, which we will see in later uh, lecture. OK, then there will be a steam enters a turbine at 3 megapascal, OK, and 350 degrees C, which we already explained. You have to uh, be given by two things, which is your P3. OK, P3 is given to you and then T3 is also given to you in the question. OK, because steam enters the turbine and the entrance of the turbine lies on your third region. OK, so then is condensed in the condenser at the pressure. So condenser is at your point number four, which means your P4 is also given in your question. OK, it's mean P3 is known. It's mean P2 is uh, P2 is also known. P4 is known. It's mean your P1 is also known. OK, because these all are same. OK, so now coming towards your question, what we have to find out? Determine the thermal efficiency of this cycle. OK, so thermal efficiency again, you have to correlate from your previous uh, section uh, in which our W cycle over Q in is uh, uh, ratio of this one is called a thermal efficiency. So now we what we have to do is we have to find out enthalpies at all the states in order to find out our thermal efficiency, because if all the enthalpies are given at all H1, H2, H3, H4, we can easily find out our thermal efficiency by previous relation. OK, so now coming towards our uh, thermodynamic condition from the thermodynamics table. OK, so now you have to follow our thermodynamics table. You just open your thermodynamics table and if you see that at state number one, OK, what does state number one says that the pressure is your 75 kilopascal. OK, so now you have to find out enthalpies at this point. How you can find out? You can just um, Okay, follow the thermodynamics table. Okay, so these are the thermodynamics table which are available at the end of your book. Okay, so now you can just okay. So now we have uh, given by pressure. So we have to see the pressure table. So there are two different. There will be a temperature table and there will be a pressure table. So if pressure is given in the question, you have to follow the. So this is your temperature table, saturated water temperature table. So we do not want to see this one because we don't have the temperature conditions. So we are available with the pressure one. So just uh, you have to scroll down and see. So this is your table A5 is your saturated water uh, pressure table. Okay, so uh, can anybody confirm that I have already started the uh, recording? OK, so as the recording is started or not? Yes, it started. OK, OK. OK, so now you have to just see that table A5 uh, pressure one is your 75 kilopascal. So 75 kilopascal is mentioned over there. OK, so what we have to find is enthalpy is at this point H1 and uh, we have to find also specific volume to find our W uh, supply to our pump as well. OK, so now you can see that where we have to find the enthalpy value. So 384.44. We can see HF, it is our saturated liquid point. OK, so you can just try down this value. 384.44 is your enthalpy value at state number one. Again, specific volume, specific volume. Where is your specific volume? So we have to see this one. Saturated liquid state and this is your 0 0.001037 is your specific volume at state number one. So now at state number one, we have these two values. OK, so these two values are known to us by thermodynamics table. Now coming to state number two. OK, so state number two, the pressure is known to us by uh, in the question. It is three megapascal as it is an isentropic process S2 and S1. S2 is equal to S1. So now we can easily find out uh, uh, work supplied to the pump. Spec uh, specific volume at state one, P2 minus P1. So specific volume is known to us by uh, previous state, OK, P2 is given in question. P1 is given in the question. So now we can find out W pumping. 
Okay, so now we are interested in to find the enthalpy's value. So we already know that W pump is equal to H2 minus H1. Okay, so it's mean that W pump is known to us by previous thing. Okay, so we have to find out H2. So H1 is known to us by this one. Okay, so now just plug in all the value. You can find out enthalpy at state number two as well. Okay, so this is how we can find out enthalpy value. Okay, so if you see that this is the isentropic process, S2 minus S1 and S3 minus S4 is the isentropic process. Okay, so now coming towards state number three. Okay, what state number three has? State number three lies on your superheated vapor one. Okay, so mean your temperature and pressure at this point is known to us. Okay, P3 is and T3 is known. So we have to find out from our superheated vapor table. So now coming towards uh, thermodynamics table again. So where your superheated water tables are, so you can just uh, scroll down. So you can see that it will be a superheated water. Okay, so now what you have to find out, you have to just find out pressure. Pressure is given three megapascal. So you have to just find out so where the pressure is of three pascal lies. So if you can notice, so there is a three megapascal pressure. Okay, so now you can just find out the way the temperature is. So this is 350, uh, 350 degrees Celsius or your temperature. So you have to find the enthalpy's values. So your enthalpy value for 0.3 is 3116.1. Okay, so P is 3 megapascal and 350 degree C. Okay, so this is how you can find out the enthalpy at 3. Same for the entropy also. We have to find the entropy value as well. Okay, so entropy value is given just beside it 6.7450. This is how we can find out the entropy value as well. So now we already have these two values in our database that uh, state number 3 is uh, we have find out. Okay, so now we are moving towards state number 4 which lies in your liquid plus vapor region. OK, so I already told you whenever there will be a liquid and vapor region point. OK, so you have to find first the quality because in this question quality is not given. So you have to find it, uh, find it out first. OK, so quality is given by this relation S4, SF and SFG. OK, uh, so this is how you can find out. So S4 is equal to S3. We already find out in previous state number three. So just plug in all the value. OK, so where this um, value come from and this value come from. OK, so this value come from also your temperature table, uh, pressure table. OK, so now go over towards again table A5, I think it was. Which is your pressure table. OK, so if you can just notice that this is your pressure table. 75 uh, kilopascal, so at the 75 kilopascal, you can just uh, see the value of your uh, SF. Where is SF? This is 1.2132. Okay, so this is your saturated uh, liquid enthalpy value. So you can find out over there. Again, you have to find out SFG also. So SFG also is given 6.2426. Okay, so now these two value are known to us. Okay, so you can find out the quality easily. Once the quality is there, so just plug in all the value again from your pressure table. HF you can find out um, in corresponding to your pressure, uh, which is 75 kilopascal from the same table. X4 is known to you. HFG is known to you. So you can find out uh, the enthalpy at state number four as well. OK, so this is not a, a difficult one. OK, so now another thing is that. Uh, OK, so now we have to find out Q in and Q out. OK, so we already find that from energy balance Q in is equal to H3 minus H2. All enthalpy as or we already find out. OK, so now just plug in all the value. You can find out Q in, Q out, H4 minus H1. OK, so again plug in all the values. You can find out Q out as well. So when these two values are known to us, you can just plug in over there. So one minus Q out over Q in, we can get the thermal efficiency easily. OK, so this is how we can find out. OK, so now if in the question uh, sometime uh, there will be a, a question that uh, you have to compare. Thermal efficiency which you are uh, calculated by Rankine cycle. You have to compare with the Cournot cycle. OK, 
so how you can do it because rankine cycle you already find out from this equation for corner cycle what you have to do is you already know the relation for the corner cycle okay so in the corner cycle what you have to do one minus t minimum or t maximum okay so this is how you can define your thermal efficiency for your corner cycle so where does t minimum come from t maximum is already given in your question okay so t minimum come from also your pressure table so if you see on your pressure table 75 Kilo Pascal, it was written 91.76. Okay, so mean your T minimum will be 91.76. Okay, so here the 91.76 you just convert into the Kelvin and you can just divide it and come up with your thermal efficiency from the corner cycle. So you can easily compare your thermal efficiency for the corner and thermal efficiency for your Rankine cycle as well. So this is how we can perform all over. Uh, thermodynamic analysis for our Rankine cycle. So, any question uh, till this point? Uh, yes, sir. Comparison with दोनों की efficiencies लिख देनी है. कोई reason पे नहीं करनी. नहीं reason आपका ये हो सकता है ना कि आप को हम अगर कहें कि आपने reason करना है कि क्यों efficiency बढ़ रही है या कम हो रही है, तो फिर उसमें आप बता सकते हैं. लेकिन right now, just you have to compare it. For example, I just say that. the 45% is the corner cycle because we already know that corner cycle has the highest efficiency as compared to rankine cycle so rankine cycle has 28% okay so this is how just you can compare but uh, the reason behind is that why the thermal efficiency of corner cycle is uh, uh, greater because uh, we already uh, uh, i already describe in your uh, limitation of your corner cycle so that why we are okay i will just explain you so why we are going to have a thermal efficiency which is highest for corner cycle and lowest for the rankine cycle because when, uh, when you see that uh, this area in the corner cycle this t3 lies in over there and this is your t2 okay so mean the temperature difference between these two points these are isothermal one okay and here the temperature difference is too much high okay so if you can just put in your questions uh, in your uh, relationship you can easily find out that uh, due to this temperature limit you will get the maximum efficiency for the corner cycle and minimum efficiency in the rankine cycle okay so then another thing is whenever we are dealing with the rankine cycle we also want that we have to uh, achieve maximum efficiency so for to get the maximum efficiency we always play with this uh, temperature value that is your t2 okay so we always try to either enhance t2 or sometimes we decrease t2 as well okay so to get the efficient cycle we will see in our later classes how we can achieve the maximum efficiency for rankine cycle as well okay so right now you just have to know that uh, this is how you can find the uh, corner cycle efficiency and you, if you want to compare it with your rankine cycle you just have to put it the value that this is how Uh, that the corner cycle has this efficiency and rankine cycle has this efficiency okay so now any other question okay so now i hope okay i hope this will be a clear because this is a very easy question uh, there will be a no difficulty in this one okay so now i will assign one question to you which you have to do by yourself which is similar to this question okay so you just have to read the equation uh, question first okay so what you have to do is uh, after um, this uh, class you have to mention your id you have to mention your section okay you have to give me value of q in you have to give me value of q out w net efficiency in my inbox okay so any student who will not reply me within 10 minutes after i will close the lecture so he will be marked and absent okay so this is a very easy one so uh, the ts diagram is already uh, drawn over there however Uh, in the question uh, of the quizzes or in your sessional exam you have to build the ts diagram by yourself okay right now just i want to make it easy okay so what you have to do is you have to just read it and write down the uh, this statement as well because after this i will close the lecture okay so what does this equation say uh, question says a steam power plant operates on a simple ideal rankine cycle so it's mean that it is a rankine cycle which is operating on a ideally between the pressure limit mean that your t3 Uh, p3 and p4 is known to you okay so these are your pressure limit in maximum pressure is given to you minimum pressure is given to you the temperature of the steam at the turbine inlet is 300 degree c it's mean t3 is given to you okay because turbine is installed at point number 
okay and then uh, and the mass flow rate okay so another uh, additional thing uh, in respect to the previous one so there will be a 35 kg per second which is your mass flow rate okay so what is the use of this i will tell you uh, okay so what does this say that uh, show the cycle on the ts diagram ts diagram is already over there determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle thermal efficiency you can find out by enthalpy's value at these all points you can find out from thermodynamics table and the net power output of the power plant okay so net power output w dot net is equal to mass of uh, mass flow rate or w cycle w cycle is q in minus q out and mass flow rate is given in your question so you can just multiply it and you will come up with the uh, answer with in some watt okay so this is how you can find the net power output of your power plant so this is one thing which is different from the previous question okay so this is your question so now you can write it down and after 5 minutes i will leave the lecture and then you have 10 minutes you can just uh, reply to me in this specific format so any question from this one you can ask me now the net power output ka zara dobara bata diga achcha ji now net power output aapke paas jo hai उसको आपने करना है मैस फ्लो रेट से मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे आप डब्ल्यू साइकिल डब्ल्यू साइकिल आपके पास क्या थी डब्ल्यू साइकिल हमने निकाली थी पिछली कि आपके पास क्यू इन जो आप दे रहे हो उसको पंप को क्यू आउट है ठीक है तो ये आपने मल्टीप्लाई करना है ये आप पहले ही निकाल लोगे इन से ओके जस्ट इसको आपने मल्टीप्लाई करना है मैथ फ्लो रेट से सो यू कैन कन्वर्ट इन टू द पावर आउटपुट ओके सो ऑफ योर पावर प्लांट Okay, so you can get the uh, value in your watt. So you can uh, just try it and practice it, and uh, I think uh, you will easily get the uh, when you uh, solve the question. Uh, uh, thermal efficiency rank and cycle की चाहिए ना Carnot की तो नहीं चाहिए. जी नहीं इसमें रैंक की चाहिए इट वाज नॉट मेंशन दैट वी हैव टू कंपेयर इट विद द Carnot वन सो यू डू नॉट हैव टू फाइंड आउट द Carnot एफिशिएंसी देन. If it is mentioned that you have to compare it with the corner cycle, so then you have to find out the corner cycle efficiency. Okay, so now you can note down the question because after this, this screen will disappear. So then you do not have. Uh, सर आपको टीम्स पर ही इनबॉक्स कर दें जी टीम्स पर ही आपने इनबॉक्स करना है मुझे अपना आईडी सेक्शन लिख के ऊपर आईडी और सेक्शन लाभ मेंशन कीजिएगा ताकि मेरे पास कुछ पता चले किसने किया है और देन क्यू इन फोर वैल्यूज क्यू इन क्यू आउट डब्ल्यू नेट एंड एफिशिएंसी Okay, so if you have one minute to just uh, note down the question. After this, I will just stop the recording, and we'll move forward. 